السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so yesterday Sheikh Ammar al-Shukri spoke about ways through which we can get to love one another and loving each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we wanted to tie it in to what we were talking about the night before gaining the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith in Musnad Imam Ahmad rahimahullah we find that loving one another is one of the ways to get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or this hadith a Qudsi hadith Allah Azza wa Jalla says wajabat mahabbati lil mutahabbina fi those who love each other for my sake my love is guaranteed for them my love is guaranteed for those who love each other for my sake and those who lil mutazawirina fi those who visit each other for my sake and those who assist each other and the scholars say financially they help each other out financially for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla and those who keep ties with each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those types of people, they are guaranteed the love of Allah azza wa jal, Just from loving one another. And in the famous hadith of the man that was going to visit his friend. And an angel comes to him and he asks him, where are you going? And he says, I'm going to visit my friend. And he says, do you have anything that you want from him? Anything of financial or whatever? And he says, nope, just going to visit him for the sake of Allah azza wa jal. The angel tells him, I'm a messenger. I'm an angel of Allah coming to tell you that Allah loves you because of your love for your brother. So loving one another is one of the ways to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now we wanted to move to loving the Prophet sallallahu But specifically, we wanted to start with the love of the Nabi sallallahu for us. The love of the Prophet sallallahu for you and for his ummah. And one of the verses that, that really explains this beautifully is in Surah At-Tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ A prophet has come to you, not minkum, but min anfusikum, which is closer from amongst yourselves. So he's one of you, so he cares for you, so he will not lie to you, he will not cheat you, he wants what is good for you. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِمَا عَنِتُّمْ Difficult upon him, مَا عَنِتُّمْ الْعَنَتْ Whatever harm or difficulty or injury touches you. Whatever harm comes to you, it's very hard for him because of his love. Harisun alaykum. says The translation says anxious over you, but it means that he cares very much for you to be guided. He cares very much for you to be forgiven. Bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim. Concerning the believers, he is ra'ufun. Ra'fa is pity. Rahim, merciful. Imam al-Qurtubi rahimahullah he says, and he quotes from Al Hussein ibn Al Fudayl, who says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never combined two of his names and attributes for anyone except for the Prophet. These are two of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa has never combined two of his names and descriptions like that for anyone except for Muhammad. And interestingly, it's right before, this was verse 128 in Surah At Tawbah. Verse 117, 11 verses ago, Allah Azza wa says about Himself, إِنَّهُ بِهِمْ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ Then 11 verses later, concerning the Prophet بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ This is our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The one that you miss so dearly. But the amazing thing is, brothers and sisters, that before you missed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He missed you. Before you missed Him, He missed you. And He says, to his companions, وَدِدْتُ أَنَّا رَأَيْنَا He says, I wish that we saw إِخْوَانَنَا I wish that we could see our brothers. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, they said, aren't we your brothers, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, rather, you are my companions. My brothers are the ones who have not come yet. He's talking about you. He missed you before you were even created. He was missing you. Aisha radiallahu anha once said to the Prophet Sallallahu Make dua, ask Allah, make dua for me with Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu says, Allahumma aghfir li Aisha. Ma, yani, ma qaddamat wa ma akharat. Oh, forgive, oh Allah, forgive Aisha. He said, ma taqaddama min dhanbiha wa ma taakhar. Whatever has already come of her sins and what is going to come of her sins. Wa ma asarrat 
وما أعلنت and what she has kept secret and what she has made public. So Aisha رضي الله عنها was so pleased with this dua that she began to to laugh or like if you would imagine she would start to giggle. She started to laugh and she lowered her head so much until it came on the lap of the Prophet She was so happy with this dua. So the Prophet tells her, Ayasurruki du'ai, did my dua make you happy? And she said, and why wouldn't your dua make me happy? So the Prophet says to her, Wallahi, this is my dua for my ummah in every salah. In every salah, this is the dua the Prophet makes for us. And every Prophet of Allah, Allah Azzawajal gave them one dua that will never be refused, that will always be responded to. And all the Prophets of Allah have used that dua, except the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, فَاخْتَبَأْتُهَا I saved this dua, this da'wah, this one, one request, one dua, I saved it with my Lord. فَاخْتَبَأْتُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي شَفَاعَةً لِأُمَّتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ so I saved it with my Lord so I can intercede for my Ummah on the Day of Resurrection, on the Day of Judgment. And on the Day of Judgment, a difficult day, people standing for 50,000 years, and some people actually feel every minute of 50,000 years passing. So they get so tired of waiting for the judgment to begin that they just want it to begin. Even if they go to the hellfire, they just want the judgment to begin. So a group of people finally go to Adam alayhi salam. And they're asking him to ask Allah to start the judgment. And Adam السلام, lets them know that today my Lord is angered in a way. He has never been this angry before. And he will never be this angry ever again. And he says, I can't do this. I'm not the one for this job. I'm not the one to intercede. Go to Ibrahim because he is the Khalil of Allah. And, and he is the Khalil. The Khullah is a higher level of love. More than a Habib. Very close to Allah Azzawajal. So they go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And all the great prophets, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, all of them, they say, nafsi, nafsi. They're concerned about themselves. So they finally go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He makes sujood and he praises Allah Azzawajal with, with praisings that he will be inspired, praises that he will be inspired at that moment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, Ya Muhammad, irfa' ra'sak. O Muhammad, raise your head. Wasal tu'ata. And ask, and you will be given. Washfa' to shaffa' And intercede, you will be given to intercede. The greatest of the prophets, nafsi, nafsi. Everyone is concerned about themselves that day. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa raises his head. And he says, Ummati ya Rabb. Ummati ya Rabb, Ummati ya Rabb. Oh my Lord, my Ummah. His concern is his Ummah. So when you come out of your grave on the day of resurrection, you find that the Prophet is already there, trying to facilitate every step of the way for you. You wake up and he's already there. He says, I will be the first, the earth separates from, um, from on top of you, and he's the first to come out of his grave. So he's already there facilitating things for you. 50,000 years and the sun is a mile away from people's heads and people are thirsty. And his pool is brought. And he is personally giving people to drink with his hands, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we ask Allah Azza wa to give us to drink from his blessed hands. And angels will push people away and he will say, Ummati, Ummati. Every step of the way, he's trying to facilitate it for you. He's interceding for people. And the Prophet ﷺ, after people go into their grave, in, into Al Jannah, and they're eating and drinking and enjoying themselves, where is the Nabi ﷺ? Still running back and forth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and back, doing two kinds of intercession. Interceding for people already in Al Jannah to take them to a higher level of Al Jannah. ﷺ. And interceding for people in the hellfire to get them out of the hellfire. People are already enjoying themselves and he's running back and forth. Interceding with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taking people out of the hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, take everyone in whose heart is the, the, the grain of barley, of iman, get them out of the hellfire. And he comes back and he makes sujood and asks Allah azza wa again. And he says, Ummati ya Rabb. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to take those who have the, the mustard seed of iman in their heart. 
and he comes back, he takes them out and he comes back again interceding until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, take out of al-jannah whoever says la ilaha illallah. What we say now, what the world is turning against you for now, what people are making fun of you now, and one day they will wish that they could have said la ilaha illallah in this dunya. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, caring, loving for the ummah, interceding for the ummah non-stop on the day of judgment. The only one who's saying ummati, ummati. There are different ways of loving the Prophet ﷺ. One of them is through studying his seerah and understanding his life. And the other is through just looking at how much he loves you. You naturally begin to love him. Jazakumullah khair for your attentive listening. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.